Welcome to EAM Trading Academy and today is all about crypto trading and investing. Our outline includes the following the difference between trading and investing and the similarities as well. A simple strategy for long-term investing. We are going to talk about types of traders, the kind of money you should use in trading. We're going to talk about risk management. We're going to talk about three ways to trade crypto, which are P2P, spot and futures. We're going to talk about how you can analyze the market and if trading with signals is good practice. All right. So first of all, what is investing? Investing means buying and selling of securities such as stocks, bonds, ETFs and a variety of other financial products, including crypto, all right? So basically in investing, you buy crypto in crypto investing, and usually based on fundamental analysis, you want to buy cryptocurrencies or coins that are undervalued, that have great potential, but the price is very low, all right? So you want to buy into those projects and then sell at a time um, when everybody you know is now aware of the product when the price of the coin is now higher all right so that's just that's the heart and soul of investing buying an undervalued coin or crypto or assets and then selling later for a higher price all right so the big difference between trading and investing is the time frame all right in investing yeah, ideally, before you can say you are an investor, you are own, it means you are holding an asset for even more than a year, all right? So you buy an asset that is undervalued, that is valuable, you know, and then you hold for a very long time. That's investing. But in trading, you're not interested in holding for a very long time. Usually, of course, you want to buy um, low and sell high, but usually at a very short time frame. All right, or at a shorter time frame compared to investing. All right, and in trading, generally traders want to try to make as much money as they can off the market. So they try to make money while the money market is going up, and then even while the market is coming down, traders are also making money by doing what is known as shorting. Shorting is a way of you know, predicting that the price of a commodity or an asset will go down and then you short it, you sell it. And then if the price of that asset goes down, you make money. All right. And of course, if the price goes up, you know, you lose money. So the big difference between trading and investing is that trading is usually on a smaller time frame. They usually, traders usually aim for a, a, a bigger return on investment or uh, should I say a bigger um, return, all right? And they also make profit when the price of a commodity is going down because they can short it, all right? So let's talk about investing, all right? One of um, the very popular, although undervalued, unappreciated strategy for investing is called dollar cost averaging. And this is where you invest a fixed amount of dollars periodically over a long period of time, all right? At one point, um, Twitter CEO was accumulating $10,000 worth of Bitcoin every week, all right? And then Bitcoin was at, Bitcoin was trading very low, around $4,000, if I'm not mistaken, all right? Now, that was, that, that is smart investing, all right? You, you identify an asset that is, undervalued and then you buy into that asset and of course dollar with dollar cost averaging what it does is that it ensures that you know you spread out right you average into the asset you make regular push um, purchase of the asset regardless of the price all right so what you, what you do in dollar cost averaging is, is that you you pick a fixed price that's convenient for you right let's say you earn ten thousand dollars in a, in a month, right? You can dollar cost averaging, averaging to an asset with just $100 
every month, right? You every month you're buying into that asset, and then over a long period of time, you will discover that you would you have you have accumulated a lot of that asset, right? Now, as I've said earlier, it is advisable to do this when this when the asset is considered as as undervalued, right? And then with dollar cost averaging, you're not really trying to speculate. You're not really trying to buy the 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 asset when it's at its cheapest, right? Because if you try to do that, you may miss out, all right? But if you dollar cost average into a valuable asset that is undervalued, uh, you're going to get a good quantity of that asset, and you're going to get it at you know um, at a very good psychological state because you're not trying to get it at the cheapest, right? You're not trying to speculate. You're not trying to guess. You're not trying to predict. All right, this is investing. All right, buying cheap, buying low, and then selling high over a long period of time. All right. Now, usually, what what most people know, what most people call investing is speculating. All right, speculating is almost the same thing as investing. All right, but if you buy Dogecoin, for example, right, Dogecoin is a meme coin and it has really no value. The only value it has is, you know, that people that it pumps and dumps and you can make money from it while, while it's pumping, all right, or dumping, all right? But that's not really in investing because, you know, like I said, in investing, you want to buy a valuable product, all right? You want to look for an asset that is, that is, that, that has some sort of intrinsic value and then that is really undervalued, all right? But in speculating, is like you're getting, you are, you are, you're taking more risk because, you know, you are not really interested in value. You are just really interested in pre in predicting or gambling. You know, predicting where the price is going. Right? People do this um, by putting money into a lot of risky projects. You know, so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. All right. So let's not digress. All right. Types of traders. Now we've said that the basic, the biggest difference between trading and investing is what that trading is um, over is done on a shorter time frame all right so based on the time frame traders can be divided into four types position traders swing traders day traders and scalpers all right now position traders can hold their positions for months to years all right i have a bitcoin position now um i have a bitcoin buy order right now twenty thousand dollars and the price of Bitcoin is around thirty thousand dollars. So I'm willing to hold that. I'm willing to wait for Bitcoin to get to twenty thousand dollars. And when that order gets filled, I'm not going to sell immediately. I may want to sell at fifty thousand dollars or forty thousand dollars. All right. So position traders hold positions for a longer period of time. All right. And then we have swing traders. Swing traders hold positions from days to weeks. All right. They are just interested. In a single move in the market, all right. Let's say the market makes a sharp, you know, downturn, all right. And these guys usually trade on the four hour or one hour time frame. And then we have day traders. Day traders, they hold their positions throughout the day, and they usually um, they don't usually leave positions overnight. So they usually trade on thirty minutes, you know, fifteen uh, minutes or one hour time frame. All right, and then we have the scalpers. This car, these guys, they are guys that trade on the five minute time frame. They just want to um, trade very, very little movement in the market, right? And they don't want to hold positions for a very long time, all right? So let's proceed. And then, what kind of money should you use in trading, all right? I'm just gonna tell you straight up don't use your school fees, don't use your rent, don't use your emergency funds. Don't use your savings. You don't use any type of fund that you usually allocate to any activity in your life for trading. If you want to get into trading, if you want to get into the business of trading and investing, and you want to be successful at it, you need to have what is called risk money. Risk money is not money that is your savings. It's not money that is your school fees or house rent or feeding money. Right? It's money that you can afford to lose. Now, this is very important it's very important that you only invest risk money in trading because trading is a risky enterprise and you can actually lose money all right and there's this saying 
fear money does not make money all right especially in trading if you want to trade you have to make sure that there's no fear attached to the money you're making you have to make sure that um you consider your risk and if you lose that money you won't lose your mind and it won't affect you emotionally or psychologically all right i talked about this in another video called risk management okay so let's continue oh, right risk management all right now like i was saying um you want to make sure that whatever money you are investing in, in crypto trading or investing should be risk money all right and of course the reason is because you can actually lose money trading and investing now don't be scared a hundred percent of traders lose money a hundred percent of business people lose money a hundred percent of human beings lose money as far as you are breathing as far as you are you, you are a human being you're going to lose money at one point or another all right however right if you want to succeed in trading for the long term you have to treat it like a business and not a hobby and you have to it's not a game it's not gambling all right you don't just trade for the thrill of trading right you you have to ensure that you treat it as a business and have proper risk management if not you're going to make losses in the long run all right so uh a, a, a higher percentage of traders um end up quitting at the end of the day and most of them don't make money reason is because they don't have proper risk management so if you really want to be a good trader you have to be a disciple you have to be a disciple of proper risk management you have to protect your capital you're trying to grow your capital but protect the ones you have and avoid making big loss all right for more um insights on proper risk um, management um, I've done on that video called risk management in trading USD futures you can go and check it out on my YouTube channel alright so let's proceed three ways to make money trading crypto right the this is it guys this is the this is the practical stuff the first one is P2P meaning peer to peer the second one is pot and the third one is futures P2P um requires a lot of um trading capital and there's usually less risk it's, it's not it's usually it, it, you're not really trying to um predict where the market is going you're not really trying to you know make make profit from you know market pumping or dumping you're just taking advantage of price difference in different places or different people or different websites all right so you can buy Bitcoin from one place and sell higher at another place you can buy Bitcoin from one person and then sell to another person for a higher price right so that that's the entire um, business model for P2P is actually very profitable if you can find a good P2P business or OTC business it's like discovering an oil well all right because just imagine if you just know where you can buy bitcoin at a price that is cheaper than market price in your locality you know you could just be buying from that place and selling to the people in your locality and if you can find a place to sell bitcoin at a higher price than than um, what everyone is getting in your community you could just be buying from your community and selling to that source right so p2p otc trading is all about getting a cheap source selling at an higher price to another source now how do you find this all right that's not within the scope of this video but just know that getting a good p2p opportunity is like discovering an oil well it could be very 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 profitable all right now let's talk about sports features features now trading sports right is trading the physical asset trading the actual bitcoin right so if you want buy one bitcoin on the spot market you actually have that bitcoin right you're trading that physical commodity but if you're trading futures futures is is not the actual bitcoin it's a contract right based on the bitcoin that's that's why it's called um a, deri a derivative all right so that's one um difference between spot and 
and features. There are a lot of differences between spot and features. Another difference between spot and features is that um, in spot trading, um, if, for example, the price goes down, let's say you buy Bitcoin at um, $10,000. All right? Um, let me try to um, represent this in a way that you can see it. All right? Let's say you buy Bitcoin at $10,000. Uh, excuse me, let me set the test box. Okay, you buy Bitcoin at $10,000. Is that all right? Let's say the price of Bitcoin goes down 50%. That means you're left with what? $5,000. Let's say the price of Bitcoin goes down another 50%. That means you're left with what? $25,000. Have you made any loss? The answer is yes. You've lost a lot of money. All right. But the truth is that if you don't sell this Bitcoin, now assuming that the price of Bitcoin when you first got into this market is just um, is $10,000, all right? You, you, you bought the first Bitcoin at $10,000. Okay, let me make this bolder so you can see. Okay, you bought the first Bitcoin. You, you bought one Bitcoin, one BTC at $10,000. And then it goes down 50%. Your money becomes what? $5,000. That's tragic. Now, have you lost your Bitcoin? The answer is no. What you have in your wallet is still one Bitcoin. Right, but it's now valued at what five thousand dollars because you've lost fifty percent of the value, and then even after you lost fifty percent again, and it becomes two thousand five hundred dollars, you still have one Bitcoin, but the value of that Bitcoin has gone down. But now this is what happens in the spot market. Now, so this means that if you can wait long enough, um, because the crypto market is usually very volatile. And it goes in circles, boom and bust circles. If you can wait long enough, usually the price will go back to, to ten thousand dollars or to the original price that you bought. So you can see you don't really lose money. What you lose is time. That is why, remember I said, if you want to be a good investor, especially in the crypto business, you need to make sure that you are using investing with risk capital, because. Let's say we have two people. Um, Mr. A invested, bought one Bitcoin with his school fees. School fees. And Mr. B bought one Bitcoin with risk money. Who do you think is going to be eager to sell? The answer is Mr. A. Mr. A who is going to be eager to sell his one Bitcoin. And let's say um, he bought one Bitcoin at the beginning of the semester, hoping that Bitcoin will get to $20,000 because, you know, everybody has just been, you know, crazy shouting about it. And then Bitcoin lost 50% of the, of, of, of the value. What it means is that Mr. A is going to be under a lot of pressure to sell his Bitcoin, although the price of the Bitcoin has gone down eventually it's going to sell and let's say it sold at this point what's gonna happen it means it's going to lose a lot of money but mr. B invested in one Bitcoin using risk money now what this means is that he can wait he can wait for the price of Bitcoin to go back up to ten thousand dollars and potentially you know even higher than ten thousand dollars you see, you see why I say only invest with risk money. Don't invest with borrowed money. Don't invest with any money that you need for anything, right? So now, why am I talking about this? Now this is because you are this is because you are trading in in the sports market. Now if you are trading in the futures market, usually you can trade with leverage. That's one of the beauty of the futures market. In the futures market, you can trade with leverage. And 
you don't even let's say the, the price of Bitcoin is actually ten thousand dollars, right? Just an example, and you have only um this is another example now, so I'm just gonna read some of these things. Now I want to explain um the futures I've talked about spots. Now um let's say you have only one thousand dollars. If you have only one thousand dollars, you can actually buy one Bitcoin. Although the price of Bitcoin is what ten thousand dollars, if you are trading with leverage, let's say you are trading with ten x leverage times ten. All right. Now let's let's take it back a little bit. I said I've said that if if you are trading with futures, you can trade with leverage. Meaning that you can actually trade multi, you can actually trade um, more than with more than your account balance. If you have an account balance of ten thousand dollars, you can trade up to a hundred times that amount. Now that gives you more opportunity to make profit, but it's also very risky. All right. So in this case, in this particular example, one Bitcoin is $10,000, but you have only $1,000. Hmm? Let's say you have just $100. If you have just $100 and you trade with 100x leverage, 100 times 100 is what? 10000 So with just $100, you will be able to trade $10,000 what uh, one bitcoin all right so it sounds like good news right with just a hundred dollars i can actually trade value of ten thousand dollars sounds like good news but you would be bearing a risk what ten thousand dollars so if this trade goes against you all right by ten percent ten percent of ten thousand dollars it's one thousand dollars it's not even going to get to ten if this trade goes against you goes in your favor by ten percent you will make one thousand dollars now remember your trading capital is just a hundred dollars ten percent of a hundred dollars would have given you ten dollars but because you are trading with a hundred x leverage meaning that you're trading with now a new capital of ten thousand dollars just a ten percent increase in Bitcoin is going to give you what $1,000 profit now this sounds good but if the trade goes against you just a 10% loss would mean that you are losing $10,000 but hey I have only $100 in my account <laughs> it means that the trade only has to go like 1% against you before that $100 gets wiped out now, in futures trading, now this is one big difference between futures and spot trading. In spot trading, remember when the price of Bitcoin was going down, the only thing we lost was time. Because eventually the price can go back up and then we recover our money and even make profit. In futures trading, if you are trading with leverage and the price of Bitcoin goes against you, because you are trading with leverage, you are trading with more risk, more potential for profit, but more risk. And if the trade goes against you, your account can get liquidated. When your account gets liquidated, it means your capital is gone. In this case, if Bitcoin falls by simple 1%, your hundred dollars is gone. Not like spots where Bitcoin can, you know, recover and then you recover your money. Your hundred dollars is gone forever. All right. So that's one big difference between spot and futures. And uh, a lot of newbies don't really appreciate um, this sort of risk in trading futures. All right. So if you're a newbie, I would advise you, you know, to try trading spot, you know, before and, and master it before you proceed to trade futures because futures is quite advanced 
and infusions you can create with leverage which actually gives you potential for more profits but it has more risk and you can actually lose your money completely your account can get your account could get liquidated all right so did you get that the first um difference between spot and futures is that in trading spot you're actually trading the physical asset but in trading futures you're tra just trading a derivative of that asset a contract of that asset we're going to go deeper into the spot versus futures in another video this is just like a broad introduction to some of the cryptocurrency um concepts all right and these concepts are not unique to cryptocurrency all right there's futures market for everything there's futures market for cotton there's future there's a futures market for almost all commodities all right and assets all right and crypto is just one asset class all right so the first difference is that in trading spot you're trading a physical um commodity when trading futures you're trading a con contract and the second difference is that in trading um futures you can make more profits because it comes with more risk and the potential to actually lose your money all right as opposed to futures where what you actually lose is time right um if you don't sell what you lose in futures in, in sport is time all right so let's proceed i hope that was clear now how do you analyze the market how do you predict the market all right you know generally in crypto trading you want to buy low and sell high how do you tell if a, if a particular cryptocurrency is low how do you tell if um is a good time to buy buy cryptocurrency you do this by analyzing the market all right and what you should know is that markets are unpredictable there is no way to actually predict the markets there's no way to figure out when the market will move how it will move why it will move nobody can predict the market what we can do is just make educated guesses you know based on some you know analysis you can make you can have a reasonable reasonably good idea of what the most probable outcome would be all right so and um two ways of actually making analysis of crypto predictions is is what we call um technical analysis ta of fundamental analysis fa let's start with fundamental analysis fa now fundamental analysis is um when you are looking at the um the happenings surrounding um, a particular cryptocurrency in order to try to understand the value of the cryptocurrency all right you want to look at the the, the surroundings i don't um i don't think surroundings is a good word here um you want to look at the environment you want to look at the properties all right of a cryptocurrency or a coin to try to um understand the value of the coin all right and try to gauge the value to see if it's is if, if, if the coin is um undervalued if it's undervalued it's a good time to buy if it's overvalued it's not a good time to buy right now why do i have this funny meme right here right this meme was was placed by um was posted by elon musk elon musk is is now the richest man in the world and you know <laughs> there was this time he he, he he placed a meme about bitcoin and he said me trying to live a productive life and then this sexy <laughs> lady trying to tempt him which is bitcoin right and made it he, he made this post bitcoin went up a little bit right because you know now we have a really big um influencer talking about bitcoin it moves the price fundament when, when you want to you know trade the fundamental analysis you want to look at news you want to look at what's happening you want to look at um the the state of the project you want to look at how the, the people back in the project you want to talk about look at who is who is talking about the project you want to talk about how much money is invested in the project all right and if you're trading with news surrounding the project 
they are trading with fu um, fundamental analysis. There was time Elon Musk also talked about Dogecoin, and you know, he just I, I don't I don't really remember. He said he was just fooling around and said that he's the CEO of of Dogecoin. Of course, everybody knew that he wasn't the CEO of Dogecoin, but because he was talking about it, everybody just went ahead to buy. It, all right, so that that movement, right, is is caused by fundamental analysis. And if you are a trader who trades by fundamental analysis, you know, by just looking at the happenings surrounding Dogecoin at that moment, just because Elon Musk was talking about it, you can just have, have a guess and say, okay, because this big influencer is talking about this coin, I feel a lot of people are going to be paying attention to it. And when a lot of people are paying attention to it, what happens? They're going to be buying it. And so you want to be the first person buying it. All right? So let me ask you a question. What happens if, for example, um, China says, the, the president of China or the government of China says that they are ban banning Bitcoin tomorrow. What will happen? The fact is that the price of Bitcoin will fall. Right? So if you are trading with fundamental analysis and you get that news, what do you do? Immediately you open a short position or a sell position so that as the price of Bitcoin is falling, you are making money. Right? So what happens if, for example, the US um, government says uh, they have accepted Bitcoin you know, as legal tender, I don't think that's possible, but okay, if you get that kind of news, you want to buy, you want to buy, 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 right? So that's good news for Bitcoin. That means a lot of, there's going to be a lot of demand for it. And when there's a lot of demand for it, what happens if the price goes up, all right? So when you're trading fundamental analysis, you want to look at news, you want to look at, you want to, as I said, which, which, which edge funds are investing in Bitcoin, which cryptocurrency, which other cryptocurrencies are they investing in, right? There was, there was a time earlier this month, I noticed that, one of the biggest um, crypto exports from Grayscale, they were accumulating Litecoin. And so, <laughs> I started buying Litecoin as well. Because if they are, they are accumulating Litecoin, it means that they have they found some sort of value in Litecoin. All right? So, that's fundamental analysis. You want to look at the happenings surrounding um, cryptocurrency. You want to look at the news. You want to look at, look at the value of the project. You want to try to gauge... The intrinsic value of the project and buy into the into the project right now in technical analysis what you're doing is actually looking at the historical performance of the of the coin you want to look for patterns that has played out in the past and try to use those patterns to predict the future right for example <clears throat> um and this is that I, I was trading eos I think this is the point where I actually need to go to my trading view and show you guys some charts because in um, trading with technical analysis, that's what you use. You use charts, all right? So let's look, look at a chart of um, EOS. I know I have it in my watch list. Let's look at the chart of EOS. Now, very good, all right? Now, I noticed that, now this is a chart of EOS that, you know, plots the price um, over time, right? Now, I noticed that whenever the price of EOS gets to, um, gets to $2.5, there's a reaction. So what would I do? If I notice that whenever the price of get of US gets to two point oh, oh come on, what's going on here? Okay, I think I I, I picked the book line. I need an horizontal line, I need a trend line. Okay, that's it. So if I notice that the whenever the price of US gets to $2.5, there's a reaction, right? If you, if you look at this chart now, you will see that whenever the price of US gets, the price of US, you know, is finding it hard to go below 2.5, all right? So, um, that means that um, I, can, I, can, I can say 2.5 is a significant level to buy Bitcoin because it seems whenever the price gets there, it always bounces back up, right? So I can use this past 
experience this history of Bitcoin to predict the way to move in the future. I can look at previous patterns, all right, to try to predict future outcomes. That's what from technical analysis is all about. And technical analysis, they use statistics, they use tools, they use a lot of statistical tools, they use a lot of um, um, charts and bars to try to you know predict the market. All right. So um, let's talk about trading with signals. Is it bad or good? The answer is yes and no. Everybody needs an entry trigger or a signal to enter the market. Even the the the, the most um, professionals, you know, the the best professionals amongst us, they have their own edge. Their own system of signals that are used to enter the market, all right? But the problem with signals is that newbies don't know what is going on and they don't know how to manage their risk. And even when they get a good signal, they still make losses. Two people can be trading with the same signals, and one of them will be making losses and the other is making profits. The difference is risk management and understanding of the market. Right, so if you're a newbie and you're trading with Signal, um, I'm going to tell you that you need to generate your own system for trading. Right, you may not want to depend on your mentor or your signal analyst forever. And when you're trading with their signals, you want to try to understand what is the thought process guiding this signal. Right, why are they telling me to buy Bitcoin right now? Right. Don't just do. You need to ask, ask why. You need to try to understand. That is the way you grow. All right. So where can I trade cryptocurrencies? You can trade cryptocurrencies in exchanges. In our next video, I'll give you uh, a more depth, in-depth exposition, an explanation of exchanges, how to use them, and so forth. Uh, that will be all for today. We've talked a lot. Um, a quick recap: We've talked about trading versus investing. How investing is usually long term, and trading is usually um, shorter term. Usually done in a shorter time frame com compared to investing. Uh, we talked about a simple trading strategy for long term investing and sort of dollar cost averaging. We talked about four types of traders: position traders. Um, swing traders, day traders, and scalpers. Talk about the kind of money that you should use in trading. Risk money. Talk about risk management and how effective risk management is the only tool that can keep you in the game for the long haul. Talk about three ways to trade cryptos, P2P, spot, and futures. And talk about analyzing the market. And how do you do that? You do that using technical analysis and fundamental analysis. And we also talk about trading signals. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you want to upgrade your skills in trading and investing, join the Emmy Trading community where you can network with top traders, where you can get quality technical and fundamental analysis for your trades, and where you can gain access to premium signals. Just follow the link below, bit.ly slash Emmy Trading Academy. And make sure you follow us on crypto, on crypto Twitter, on our Twitter, <laughs> sorry, to stay updated, all right? Uh, Twitter and this is Emmy Crypto. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was value for your time. Bye bye.